How do I humble myself? The Bible clearly commends humility and condemns pride. We're commanded to seek humility in Zephaniah 2.3 and put on humility, Colossians 3.12. Have a humble mind, 1 Peter 3.8. Humble yourselves before the Lord, James 4.10. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, 1 Peter 5, 5 and 6. And Jesus himself, in one of his most frequently repeated teachings, said everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and everyone who humbles himself will be exalted. And so we want to ask, how do I humble myself? And when we ask that question of the scriptures, the answer we get is surprising and humbling. The very first mention of humbling yourself in the Bible is in the book of Exodus. The context is Egypt. God has sent Moses to confront Pharaoh to let the people go. God has revealed himself to Moses as Yahweh, I am who I am, the one who is in his covenantal name. And Pharaoh gets approached by Moses and he hears from Moses, the God of Israel says, let my people go. And Pharaoh responds, who is Yahweh? Who is this that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I do not know Yahweh. I will not let the people go. And 10 terrible plagues follow as Yahweh answers Pharaoh's question, who is Yahweh? Yahweh shows himself. God shows himself in the rescue of his people and the destruction of their enemies. So fast forward now after the first seven plagues, right before the eighth. This is Exodus chapter 10, verse 3. Moses says, on God's behalf to Pharaoh, how long will you refuse to humble yourself before me? So this power encounter between Yahweh, the true God, and Pharaoh, who purports to be God, is about self-humbling. Will Pharaoh humble himself, or will he continue to exalt himself by not listening and obeying to the word that Yahweh gives through Moses? which shows us at heart, in a very basic way, what humility is. Humility is a virtue in the creature, in humans, in those who have been created, that acknowledges and gladly embraces the godness of God. In a very basic way, humility says, He is God, and I am not. This is what the encounter between Moses and Pharaoh was about. God acted first. He said to Pharaoh, let the people go, and he sent the plagues. And then the question came to Pharaoh, how will you respond? Will you humble yourself before God, or will you exalt yourself? Will you ignore the words of the living God or humble yourself before him? Will you admit Yahweh is God and I am not? The same is true for us today. We may not be confronted by a prophet like Moses, but God does confront us in our lives with his difficult providences. He confronts us in the exposing of our sin with a family member or from a friend, or he confronts us in sickness or in disease or in a global pandemic, or he confronts us with death or with the loss of a job or with an unwanted breakup or with a divorce, or some difficult relational breach that humbles us. God takes the initiative in humbling us, and then the question comes to us, will you receive his humbling? Will you humble yourself? Will you try to explain it away, or ignore it, or kick back against God? Humility says, he is God, and I am not uncomfortable and painful as my humbling circumstances may be, I receive them from the humbling hand of God. And that doesn't mean I don't pray for rescue. In fact, humbling ourselves by praying for rescue can be precisely one of the ways that we respond appropriately to God's humbling hand. So how do I humble myself is a good question. But it has a surprising answer and a humbling answer. Humbling ourselves isn't something that we just up and do. 
It's not something we dream up or do in our time frame or have a list of life hacks to do. Humbling ourselves begins with the humbling hand of God. He moves first. He acts first. And then the question comes to us in our pain, in our difficult circumstances, in our humbling times, will you humble yourself before God? Thank you.